Good evening. This is Cyan speaking. I am currently broadcasting at an abandoned hospital. Uh, I'm not sure of the name of the place. Uh, thank you to the homunculi who brought the equipment by. At least I believe it was the homunculi. Uh, the council invited me, according to Crimson. <laughs> I was so flattered. Honestly, they never invite me for anything. Um, they invited me here to come in and talk about myself, and so here I am. Um, I'm a bit unsure of where to start exactly, though. Maybe... Um, yes, that seems like a good topic to start with. I am going to talk to you, listeners, about my time shared with a man very near and dear to me. Uh, a man who I will henceforth refer to as the Magus. The Magus is as stoic now as he was in his younger years, but back then he might have had more of a sense of humor. I always remember the sounds of the waves from visiting the beach with him, or the sound of the wind whistling through the trees and the forest and the crunch of leaves underfoot as we just walk along and talk about things that don't really matter. But one of my fondest memories is one of the annual bake sales from years and years ago. Issa has never lost a year at those bake sales, no doubt because she's been training in her baking for so very long. Frankly, I feel like she should get an award for her butterscotch cream pie. It's so fluffy, and the decorations are simple, but it just melts in your mouth when it hits your tongue. The first time I tried it, though, it was a magical experience, especially when the mages stepped in. I had been under the impression that humans attack their food much like the education board attacks the losing party of this contest. The Magus sought to correct my errors and my way of thinking. He guided me, unfortunately briefly, in delicacy. He moved to my hands just so. It was a happier time, most definitely. Lately, those experiences have been coming less Less. Less. Ever since the colors started spending more time with each other. Ever since I started spending more time with them. The mage just visited us a few times before, but he didn't seem to share the same sword amicability with the others as he did with me. The mage just especially do something, anything right by my kin, and someone always ends up hurt. I'm so useless. I just want to get help everyone get along. But every time I try to help, things always end up worse than before. I can't even do right by my mages. If anything, he probably hates me by now. I wouldn't blame him. I just want to be good for something.
It looks like she took the bait after all. A little letter singing her praises with the council's signature, and she comes running. Typical Cyan. Well then, Hierophant, she's all yours. <coughs> Surely you can glean more from these cyan entrails than you could from the guts of those well, humans or that gray. So you, Hierophant, the last Hierophant. Tell me, where is Autumn? You'll, you'll have to excuse me. I, I thought for a second there that you said you don't know. I don't think you understand. These aren't the guts of some vigilante or another gray. This is a color. I murdered a color. We had a deal, Pyrophant. I get you the guts, and you tell me what I want to know. Don't take that tone of voice with me. If there's a problem, let's hear it. Why? Can't you find her? What's wrong with Cyan's guts? Not wicked enough? Not unholy enough? <laughs> Ridiculous. Do you have any idea what this color has done? Do you have any idea the colors she's broken? What she did to Cinnabar? What she did to my brother? And then Goldenrod sent me to hunt them down. And I hunted them down, oh, I hunted them down, and I killed them, and I killed Lavender, and I killed Chartreuse, and I killed Periwinkle, and I killed my brother Cinnabar! And now, I've killed Cyan. So, Hierophant, all I need you to tell me is who to kill Next. <laughs> Unholier. Unholier than Cyan. That's what I need. That's who I need to paint crimson so that you can find Autumn in the whispers of that most unholy viscera. Oh. Oh. Cyan left the equipment on. Then again, I guess I didn't really give her the chance to turn it off. Well, while I'm here, Autumn, if you're listening, I miss you. I miss you so much, and I'm sure you miss me. But don't worry, we'll be together again soon. I will paint this world until there's nothing left but me. And then, no matter where you are, 
I'll be with you. You'll look at this blood-red city, and you'll remember those dreams that you had of me before I was pulled from your head, before I was torn from your sight. Just like the greys are torn from the masses, or the sisters were torn from Dolores, or Cyan was torn from that vigilante, or Turquoise was torn from the previous predictor. The council has the nerve to tear us apart, and then they call this meaningless half-existence normal. If you ask me, we're the normal ones. I'm the normal one. Anyway, I've kept you waiting too long, my autumn. I've got to find someone unholier than Cyan now. To eviscerate. And I think I know just the gentleman. Goodbye. Arbitrary. Goodbye, Cyan. In the end, you were as useless as always. This has been Autumn's Favorite Color. Signing off.